All right. Brother Neil. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. What's up? We're live. Yes, sir, let the people know. All right. What we must do to be saved is to believe the gospel, the gospel of Jesus. And that gospel is that Jesus, he came unto his own. His own received him not. His own were the Jews. He was sent by God, his father, who sent him in his own name, in the name of God. That is Jesus. Jesus went into his own. His own received him not. The Jews, they killed the man, Jesus Christ. They did not receive him. He came as their king, anointed by God to, to be their king, their Messiah, the one they were waiting for. But they knew him not, so they did not receive him. They put him on the cross for envy. They believed he was blaspheming. They killed him. He rose on the third day. They buried him first. They rose. Uh, he rose on the third day by the power of God, and he was seen alive. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we need to believe on the Son of God in the name of the Son of God, because the name of the Son of God is the name of God. God gets the glory by that name. But we profess that name, Jesus. Uh, amen. Amen. I believe the same thing, the, the gospel, that Jesus is the Holy One of Israel. He's God manifest in the flesh. He's the Christ. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. They condemned him to the cross, where he paid for the sins of the whole world. He was buried in the sepulcher, but he rose on the third day, and he was seen alive by his witnesses. That's the gospel that... Paul preached and Peter preached too. Jesus even preached it. He was the first one to preach it and we still preach it today. And it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Very clear. It's not by our works. So don't believe your pastor, don't believe your own understanding. Um, our own um, our own thoughts you know a common sense what people call it don't go by your own common sense just go by God's word it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life so whosoever is someone that sins once a day and Someone that sins a million times a day. That's a whosoever. No matter the nation, the language, the age, whosoever means whosoever. So just believe it. Believe on Jesus. Yeah, what up, or, uh, my bad. Brother Patrick. Get it in one time if you've got time. Um, how y'all doing? I'm back. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so I, I agree with the gospel. Uh, I only got a part of it, but I'm certain it was the truth. Uh, that Jesus Christ is the one that you must believe on. That's how you um, will be eternally saved. And Jesus Christ did it did everything for you. All you have to do is believe. Uh, believing is, is not a work uh, that man can boast on. Um, it is the work of God. And um, believe on it before it's too late. And God's promise um, God's promise was fulfilled by what he did through his son and he sent his son to his own and his own received him not and um they crucified him condemned him to the cross uh, rejecting their messiah and um they laid him in a sepulcher after he was physically dead three days three nights took him down from the tree 
and on the third day, uh, he rose again, and by the power of God, and after he had risen, he was seen. That's the gospel that you must believe in your heart, and uh, Acts 3, 13, it says, um, let me just pull it up real quick. It says, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our father, have glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Um, and I believe that with my heart. Uh, it shows you... Uh, God the Father in this. It shows you the Son, Jesus Christ, um, what happened to him, being delivered and denied in the presence of Pilate. Um, what a um, troubling, what a troubling um, disposition to be in Pilate was um, because he thought that um, Jesus Christ was dumb as a lamb. Uh, he was in awe that he stayed silent. And um, when they, when he mentioned what they called him, he said, um, he said, I forget what he said. It is, I don't think he, what did he say? He was like, they call you the king of the Jews, or they call you the son of God. I forget. Does anyone remember? What, what Pilate said? No, Pilate, Pilate said they're calling you the, the king of the Jews or something. And Jesus, that was the only time he, he said something. And he responded with like, I forget. I was sad. Said it. Thou sayest. Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto them, Thou sayest. So that's all he said. And Pilate was um, just in awe. You know, he was facing death. And um, he was just dumb as a lamb. And. Um, So, yeah, he washed his hands clean of it, and they still pleaded. they rather someone that was um, guilty be free, someone that had murdered someone, and um, to be free over Jesus Christ, who absolutely did nothing wrong. He never sinned, and um, that was the hate that they had towards them. That was their... Uh, Pure rejection of the Messiah, and uh, their ears were not open, their eyes were not open, they couldn't hear, um, they couldn't see, and it's just crazy, you know, all the all the things that they were doing on a daily basis, you know, reading and praying, and you know, appearing to be such men of God, you know, having a zeal of God but it wasn't according to what it needed to be. And um, Jesus Christ is the Holy One because of the name that he inherited, which is Jesus. He's the Holy One because he's the only begotten. He's born of the Holy Spirit. So God's Holy Spirit in him. So he's the Holy One. Incorruptible. And, yeah, I just encourage anyone that may be hearing this and listening to it that you believe it with your heart um, because this life is just a vapor it's just a moment and the best life is life with Jesus so yep Amen. what up Cedric 
So, hey guys, Ted. how y'all doing? How y'all what's doing? Yes. How are you? Everything all right? Good to hear. Just checking in. Man, how's it going? Let me know when you get a gossip break. Let me get mine in. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I believe the report that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh as Jesus Christ. He came to his own and they denied him. They put him on a cross and he he died. After three days, he rose again and was seen by over 500 witnesses. Uh, that's the report I believe for salvation. And if if that's if that's important to you, you should believe that same report. Uh, I'm going to read Hebrews 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that's my report and my scripture. I'm just here for support, brothers. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> yeah, I titled the study, Money is the Root of All Evil? Question mark? No. So what is the root of all evil? Is it money? That would be the love of money. Oh, I always leave that out. The love of money. Money, what does scripture say? Money fix, fixes all things? or Money answers all things. Money answers all things. Yeah. But the love of money. Says more money, more problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if you buy all this stuff with money, all that stuff needs to be fixed <laughs> and kept and cleaned. You just right. have a bank account. It's whatever. Some people just this want more and more. What was that? You were, you were breaking up. Can you hear me now? Yep. So I just was having this conversation. Not, not anymore. And... No? Okay. Well, never mind. Oh, you're back again. Oh. Okay, Neil, first you. <laughs> All right. Um... Yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. Um, yeah, uh, some people just want more money. They think their life is going to be better. And, uh, you know, um, I think we're, you know, we're, we're, we're all blessed here. It sounds like all of our businesses are doing good and, and God gives what he feels. And, and uh, you know, I, I think he gives abundantly. Um you know, I'm happy with what he gives. I'm, I don't think we ask for riches. Um, you know, I pray for, you know, the money that we need to survive in this world. And, and uh, you know, I don't need an overabundance. Um, I'm comfortable. You know, if there's any run over and uh, uh, let it, let someone who is deserving have it, you know, I don't need any more. You know, it's always nice to be comfortable <clears throat> you know food on the table um house or uh, shelter over your head um job transportation health knowledge wisdom um but yeah money uh if he gives enough money to answer all things that we need i don't need any more so you know we're, we're gonna have our reward in heaven um you know, 
but uh, I'm sure he'll, if he, as long as he keeps blessing us here, that's awesome. Amen. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Okay, yeah. Before I moved out here, I was, um, you know, I was saying that to me, wealth is, you know, time well spent and, you know, what I do with my time, you know, me trying to create this little oasis, you know, being able to wake up to such beauty, you know, have God's word around me, have great fellowship around me. Um, you know, I, I genuinely look forward to the fellowship. I look forward to learning from my brothers. I look forward to, you know, whatever the new experiences are through the fellowship, just growing, maturing. And it's almost like it is just, uh, it gives me something to look forward to um, constantly, you know. Um, and so I'm always motivated, you know, just recently, you know, I'm, with uh, Kari and Kai preaching. I mean, what a great motivation and example we have, you know, with just little children. And, you know, not only the fellowship and just, you know, living peaceably with my neighbors, you know, having a successful business, you know, I don't, I want to be successful in business. I don't have to be, you know, uh, you know, this patriarch of the best of the best, you know, or the most of the most, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to have that because, uh, you know, wealth is in so many other things in my life, you know, being able to read God's word and, and, and have more understanding and wisdom building on top of my wisdom to live life better. You know, money is, you know, it's great that I have it, but it's like, it doesn't, it literally, you know, it, it helps you get the things that you may want quicker, but, you know, living the life that, you know, you want to live, it's like, you can be a lot more content than what, you know, most people think they can be, they can be more content. But of course you have the enemy and your flesh, you know, appetizing you and, you know, trying to have all these things appeal to you that, oh, you need this or, oh, you need that or, you know, but really, I mean, life is, I believe God, you know, created life to be simple and, you know, he just put Adam and Eve in the garden and, you know, they ate from it and they, you know, just lived, you know, just amazingly until, you know, we know what happened. But so wealth is, that's wealth to me. Um, and I just am, I've really been able to capture more of that being here <clears throat> and I am I, I'm I feel blessed to be in a position where I can afford the things that I you know, want to get um but I just was having this conversation with my mom you know because she's coming to retirement and my uh my dad sold his house and there's like some situation where her name was still connected to it and you know it kind of just kind of like birthed something in her, like she wanted to, you know, maybe go contact the lawyer. I'm like, mama, just, just let it be. You've been, you know, you've been away from that situation for 15, 16, 17 years after you divorced. And like, you haven't, you know, like what kind of life are you really trying to live? Are you trying to live in a mansion? Are you trying to have a Ferrari? I mean, what the little, you know, 40, $50,000 that you'll get if he split it, how really is that going to increase your life so substantially to where it's going to make, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just kind of had to, you know, break it down to, her. I had to have, be that parent, you know, how things shift again, you know, the children become the parents and you're, you know, talking to your parent, like you're, you're the parent, but mm -hmm. I mean, what exactly do you, what exactly do you want out of life that is like, really, you just should let that go. Just let it be. Um, you know, you say you trust in God, you trust in the Lord, you have faith in the Lord and all that. But life doesn't have to be, you don't have, you don't need a million dollars. You know, you don't have to live in a big fancy house. You don't need the things that the world tells you that you need to be happy, you know. And so me, you know, learning this climate out here, getting to, you know, a point where I can grow, get back to 80% of growing my food, growing 80% of my food. 
you know, and eventually adding livestock onto that. So then I'll cut costs on meat. You know, all of those things, that's so invaluable to me. So anyway, I know that was a little long-winded, but. I, I agree, Patrick. I just want to add to that what you just said. And, and you know, you're you're venturing out and planting your own uh, food, you know, well, you know, with God, God's the only one that can make these things grow, but he's seeing you do the work like, like Adam, he, he put Adam in the garden to, to work the garden, um, to do works for God. Right. Because, and, and Adam was to do it because he loved God. It's his father. Right. And so the same as us, you know, he's, he's our father. God's our father. So when we're showing what you're doing, like you're showing your love for the land and what God's gifts are and, you know, his food and, and you're working for it. And the sweat of your brow, uh, I, I, I can only think that God really appreciates that and loves you for that. And, uh, and, and I think he bring you increase for that. So, amen. You know, that, that's awesome what you're doing. You made a big move, a leap uh, on faith, you know, and, and with your faith, you, you, you went forward in, in this because your faith is great. Um, so, amen. You know, you trust the Lord that much to, to make this big move. Um, and knowing he's going to walk you through this. So, amen, man. It's awesome. Hey, amen. Yeah, I had, I definitely have some supportive brothers on my side that, you know, I counsel with, and I also, you know, just kind of wanted to, you know, see what they thought and see whether I was crazy or, you know, what the case may be. Cause sometimes you can, you know, you can be thinking crazy, but I'm grateful I had, couple of brothers that just were you know able to to counsel with me and really just kind of you know because it's different when you're just saying okay I'm going I'm about to do it you haven't talked to anybody you know you may have planned for it or whatever but you haven't talked to anybody really about it um but just you and God so it's good to you know have that and I'm grateful so yo what's new what are we talking about The love of money. Yeah. What do you find is money is the root of all evil? Is it? The love of money. Amen. They always trying to twist that. But put a big no behind it. Yeah, money money answer of all things, but the love of money is the problem. Amen. Amen. What you up to, BT? Um, I'm detailing. BT, what you got going on? I'm detailing. Okay. Hey, man. Hard-working brother right there. Yeah. Doing, doing action right now. Got my drill out. Shampooing this here. Got the extractor. I'm not sounding weird, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, there it is. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. Like I'm content. Like David said, um, Psalms 23, is it? The Lord is my shepherd, shepherd I shall not want. I'm content. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we sh we can carry nothing out. We already yeah. know. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Just food and raiment. Hmm. That's it. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which mm. drown men in destruction and perdition. Mm -mm. I don't want it's it. It's true. I don't want it. So true. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So it's on them. They're in many sorrows because they loved money. Mm. And they coveted after it. So just being content. How about uh, treasures? Are we supposed to store up treasures here on Earth? Yeah. Why is that one? Uh... If you're a uh, foolish man. Uh, I don't know where that one is. New Testament for sure, right? Oh, yeah. There it is. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where with and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through Amen. nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will, will your heart be also. Mm. That's Amen. good. One. That's good. That's so good too because it just speaks of your heart, where your heart will be. Because if you're living in the world, your heart's going to be in the world storing up treasures for here. And if you're storing up treasures for heaven, you're 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 going to be walking more in the spirit and living for for heaven and storing. You know, that's where your heart's going to be at. That's so it's great stuff, man. Amen. Amen. It's just sad to me that people just eat the same stuff every day. You know, with my garden, I get to try different tastes and different foods and textures. And, you know, I don't have to eat, you know, zucchini. I can eat, you know, six other varieties of squash that, you know, someone may never have in their life or a different type of cucumber or a different type of potato or like there's so much, you know, uh, variety to eat. It's, it's never boring. So. Yeah. You had me thinking about like potato leek soup before when you were mentioning those leeks, I was like, oh man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Potato leek. Oh, I'm going to restart real quick. It's uh, kind of slow, my laptop. Be right back. Okay. Okay. Be glad when you get that new, that new computer that you're working hard for. How it's big there, is it going? There, right? You say what, Brother Fed? How big is it going? Um, well, I was working on a half acre and then I actually moved to a different spot and now I'm just doing a quarter of an acre. Uh, but yeah, it's about a quarter of an acre. I'll probably have maybe 30 raised beds. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten fruit trees and... Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Probably about like twenty-four berry bushes. Um, and a lot of them are mature rootstock, so they're they're not babies. They're produced this year, but it's just getting past this uh this last cold wave that we supposedly get. Um, because I was telling Kurt before everybody popped on, like. Like my grapes are, they already have little miniature grapes on them. And, you know, if you get below 30 degrees, uh, uh, some of your berries and some of your grapes can be affected by it. And even the blooms, uh, depending on depending on how cold, I don't know how 
sold as going to get, but everybody has everybody been talking has. about that. That's why I haven't really planted anything in the soil as far as vegetables go, um, because I'm waiting for this last little bit of cold. But I have right now in my trailer, which I'm about to move it to this building that I just got. Um, I have squash, uh, cucumbers. Um, what else? Um, uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts. Like I have a whole bunch of stuff growing right now. Right now. And then of course, I don't have to plant until you know, like beans and okra and stuff like that. I can plant them later. But yeah, onions, potatoes, like pretty much everything. Corn. I'll be growing everything. But this is my first year here, so I don't know. I'm still learning this climate, so it's a little tricky. And I'm I'm sure I'll get at least fifty percent production, but. You know. Well, was the garden there before you got there, or you started the whole? You did the whole thing. I'm starting starting it. Yeah, my my oh, property sure. was pretty much just rocks and uh, loamy soil. You know, like the lower parts. But yeah, it's, it, we're we're in the mountains, so it's uh supposedly like centuries ago this used to be uh like a volcanic activity area, so it's a lot of lava rock. But yeah, I'm 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 in the mountains, so. This land hasn't really been touched, so all the work, all the excavation, all the driveway and, you know, gravel and stuff I've been putting on, down is all new. Your days be full of fun, I see. Oh, man. I can't even. That's what I'm telling you. That's what, I'm, that's what I was just talking about, wealth. It's like, how do you how do you define wealth? You know, is it by the money you have and how you can spend it and what you can spend it on, or is it, you know, uh, an abundance of time and what, you know, is your time well spent? You know, for me to be able to start from something from seed and see it fruit and literally have it on a plate in front of me while I'm watching TV, you know, it's like, it's just yeah, it's a great, pretty it's a feeling kind of a, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So yeah. it's, a be it's a beautiful thing, man. I just, it's kind of, it's kind of breaks my heart a little bit when you have people that, just prefer the, the convenience prefer of going to the grocery store when it's not the same taste, it's not the same uh, caliber, not the same level of, of taste, you know, and then you have a, a wider variety of, of, of things that you can, you know, fill your palate with. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm doing it because I love it. I love, I enjoy to eat, you know, um, as many of us do, but I, you know, I'm kind of like a, like a foodie. But it's a blessing, man, for sure. And you do you do most of your cooking? I do most of my cooking. Yep, I can cook very. Oh well. yeah, that's loud. That's nice. I come from a family of cooks, so yep. I do a little something. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? <laughs> Brother Derek, how's it going? Uh, I'll get the guys going real quick. Cause if my phone rings, my that's phone. when I drop off real quick oh. here. But I better get it in while I can. So the man Christ Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. He came onto his own. The Jews, they killed him. They put him on the crosses. That's where he died. And he, he was buried. Three days later, he arose and he was seen by over 500 witnesses. It's the name Jesus. No matter where you are, where you live, where you are on this earth, it's J-E-S-U-S. -E -S. Believe on the name. Believe the gospel. So how's everybody doing? I'm good. The the main You're question right. is how are you doing? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh yeah, that was that was nuts. I have never seen wind. Usually usually when it just kind of gradually increases around here, but for about ten minutes you could hear it coming from a distance. So we didn't know if it was a tornado or if it's flatline winds, because a tornado sounds like a train from a distance. As it's coming, it sounds like a train running. And mm -hmm. uh, we could hear it yeah. coming, and all of a sudden it was like, bam! There it was. It was it was here. And uh, when I when I I told everybody to go in the crawl space. We don't have a basement here. We it's like a crawl space, so you, it's just kind of where we store stuff and whatever. And I had everybody go down there, and um, but we we got we were fortunate. Uh, none of our trees had much damage, but there's people about a mile or two away that their houses are gone. 
So we had oh, enough man. cover here. We had enough cover here to where we were okay. Lost power for a while, but I just started the generator um, for the power. And uh, so we, we were fortunate, but they're still doing cleanup work around here. I thought for sure we were going to get hit by a tornado, the way that felt, the way it was the suction yeah. and, the, and the, the way the trees were just twisting around. I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. And I got a graduation to get ready for in a couple of weeks. And it's not going to look pretty around here. But, uh, but like I said, it turned out good. Wow. Good to hear. One group you know uh, did you know I can't really understand you were you were you okay okay hey, you're cutting out so what's the topic of discussion today we're talking about the love of money love of yeah, Kurt, what verse we going from, Kurt? What, what verse you had up there? What was that? I was asking which verse you was reading from. That's what I was asking. Um... I wasn't reading anything. Maybe before I uh, left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before, before you left and restarted, you oh, asked. Okay. You had lines up there. Love of money. Because I think the first one you read answered the whole question. First Timothy six. Six and six. Starting from six, yep, line six. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, the love of money, which was some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's the thing, if anything that's evil, human trafficking, drug dealing, um, lying it always traces to the money. Always. That's yeah, the root. The root. It's, yeah. yeah, the key is there the love of it. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with it, but it's the love of it. I mean, money answers all things. I mean, um, I mean, start, they leave an inheritance to your children's children. Uh, you know, whether it's land, home, whatever, inheritance, money. So I'm hoping to leave as much as I can. That doesn't mean I love it. Mm. I'm just trying to look out for them. So... But wealth, wealth, I, I consider money. Now, there's a difference between wealth and happiness. But wealth, anytime you talk about wealth, I believe that always refers to money. So, but it doesn't necessarily you're going to be happy. <laughs> I mean, Paul was content with whatever stage he was at. It talks about Paul being content. I don't remember where that's at, but well, it's all the love, all like the you love. said, it's the love, love of money. So of money. you know, you could have a lot of money, and, of money. and that, yeah. lot, of and that lot of money can make you can make happy, happy. Uh, but happy uh, to say maybe if you're like a good Christian and saying, well, if I have an abundance, uh, the money making me happy would be for me to give the overrun of money that I'm never going to use and don't love to someone who can use it uh, and, and maybe make their life better. 
but you know that would make probably us happy um you know but we we don't you know do we money fixes all things so you know what what needs fix it something that's broken or something <laughs> you know we obviously need to live um but if we have much more than uh, money than the means we need to live by, um, you know, do, do we need that? You know, does that make is what makes us happy money sitting in the bank? Um, I don't think so. Um, but, you know, maybe if you can make someone's life happier uh, or, or someone in need, someone that doesn't have the uh, barely a house or, or uh, a box over their head, um, maybe makes us feel accomplished as a Christian uh, to maybe bring them a gospel and, and give them some money so that they could live, that, that it could fix, fix it them. Um, but, you know, we're told it's better to give uh, than to want. But and to receive. It's better to give than to receive. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, the one that I was thinking of is a Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversations be without covetousness. And be content with such thing as ye have. For he has said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's, I think that's the one I was thinking about, being content. Uh, there might have been another one, too. Um, maybe it's First Timothy 6, 7, and 8. For we, we brought nothing into this world, and as certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will, will be rich fall into temptations and a snare and to, to many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. Oh, the, oh, yeah, there you go. For the love of money. That's the one there. I guess I didn't realize that was right before that one. But So there's a responsibility, too. There's more temptations with it that come with it. Amen. That's for sure. That's where uh, I believe God's wisdom and and knowledge uh, comes into uh, into play. You know, what is it said about wisdom? To uh, if if to have anything, have wisdom. Um, like uh, Solomon, Solomon. You know, he was looked upon highly from God because he prayed for wisdom. I think, right. Yeah, he wanted wisdom. He didn't ask for riches, but he got riches, but mm -hmm. he didn't ask for it. He asked for uh, wisdom and knowledge, if I recall, but he was rewarded because he didn't ask for the what most people would ask for is riches and fame and all that. Amen. I agree. I just found that the price doesn't always equal money. So no mention, no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is is above rubies. Mm -hmm. No can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. So what is the price? It's, it's the value, I guess. I'm trying to remember. It's not that always money. That's right. I'm trying to look for that scripture where, but it's not easy on this phone. But uh, one where, um, um, I think Jesus was talking to a a man and, uh, he. Told him he obeyed all the commandments uh, from from childhood, and um, so then Jesus said, "Okay, um, then give everything that you own, or something like that." And the guy had a lot, and he uh, kind of put his head down, <laughs> walked away. He didn't want to give up everything he had because he was had a lot. I don't remember where that what is. Is it? One young man here is saying, what? Yep, yep. Let's see, where's that start at? You want to just 
pinch up just a little bit, like maybe 20 or, okay, yeah, well, he says, uh, well, I guess we'll say the young man say unto him, all these things I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard this saying, that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So then, uh, I guess, uh, let's say, then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man hardly shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So, yeah, I mean, that, that guy, it's, he, he showed that love for his possessions and his money, and um, he didn't want to give it up. You know, his, his love was more for that. It's sad. Uh, well, the thing is, with the rich people, right? They have to they have to work hard most of the time. They have to work for it. So all of a sudden, it's oh, I just got to believe in Jesus, and I can be saved. And there must be something. No, nothing in this world is free. So you gotta repent. You gotta do good deeds. See, that's why. I did. It's, it's easier for a camel to pass the eye of a needle for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Right. Oh, we got someone in the comments. Okay, Mitty. Join the study. Okay, Mitty. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with being rich. Job was rich, Abraham was rich, Solomon, David. Well, then, <clears throat> that's how you use it, like a tool, right? Yeah, and I was thinking about that, being content in First Timothy uh, 6, 7, having food. Where, where, where was it? Talk about having food and raiment. Uh, where I lost it. First Timothy 6, 8, having food and raiment. So is there any examples, just thinking out loud here, of a believer having no food or no raiment starving is there any examples to where that's something we have to worry about um i don't know if there is any examples of that is there maybe here in james 2 just if a brother or sister so it that's a believer, I'd say, right? Be naked, oh. so that's no, that's no clothing, and destitute of daily food, so that's hunger. Oh. And one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be warm and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, good point. That speaks exactly what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those two points as well. So <laughs> what would cause what would cause a brother or sister to be destitute and, and uh, be naked and destitute of uh, daily food? It's a good question. I'm guessing a uh, lack of faith, maybe. Who said? Who knows? 
wasn't Paul hungry and, and naked as well sometimes? And he listed out. Do we have Do we have scripture that say the poor will be with us always though? The poor? When Jesus said you have the poor always with you. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. Good one said, you called it. Yeah. Is that when the woman was putting the oil on him or something? Yeah, the ointment, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think. What are we digging in on over here? BK yeah. in the building. What's up? BK in the building. Yes, sir. Uh, what, what? Raising those superstars. In How's it going? Those How's it going? Hey, man, God is good. No, I heard y'all was just listening in. I was wondering what y'all were. Yeah, what, what was the question? What were we looking at? Talking about the love of money. Okay, because y'all was talking about. The, is someone be naked in the destitute of clothing or something like that? Or... Yeah, Derek was asking what, what causes someone to not have uh, food or uh, clothing. I was just throwing a question out there, but uh, and I was I was like, well, is there examples of a brother, a believer, having uh, uh, no food or clothes? Because Paul say Paul said uh, in having food and raiment, let us let us be there with content. So that just I was thinking out loud and like, well, is there an example of a of a believer having no food or raiment? And if so, why? Oh yeah, James two is perfect for that. Doesn't it say that in the yeah. hunger and thirst and fasting off and cold nakedness and and nakedness. There you go. That Paul was he was hungered and naked and thirsty. <laughs> and that's the um that's saying, you know, that we should give to them. But uh, Derek, are you asking like why would that happen to a believer or why was why yeah, was a believer just, in that position? Yeah, or? I'm just trying to apply that to us today. I mean, you know, that now they're talking about food shortages and this and that. I mean, we're not to live in fear, so but what I mean is it our uh uh, something we're doing in our daily life that's causing a rod of man, right? Was was that, that Kelly? You pointed that one out uh, the other time. Our our chastening is it chastening that from the rod of man, maybe, or or you know, could we get judgments now? You know, we 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 don't always walk uh, a perfect walk, so you know we're gonna have chastening. Uh, we got to have correction, right? So maybe these things happen. Yeah. He says, "Through much tribulation, will we enter into the kingdom?" Oh, good one, good one. Yeah, I think often about that. Is it um, was it Second Samuel seven fourteen that it said how we're chasing by the rod of men? Second Samuel. What? Was it Second Samuel seven fourteen? Let's see if I got it right. Yeah. It says I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. So, so. Mm -hmm. Amen. So yeah, so that's a good point. So we can suffer, you know, tribulation or t t tough times through the rod of men that God is allowing to happen. Well, God, you know, God allows or, or not allows, you know, any, any of these things to exist. But, but also the persecution or the tribulation from, from the devil and from his, his people and from the world, I guess I, I should say, 
would come just to those that trouble you. And that's where he's coming to avenge or revenge, you know, to be, uh, to put vengeance on those that persecute you, as he says, in second uh, Thessalonians chapter one, I believe. And then in Acts 14, 22, he's talking to the other disciples. We're talking through much tribulation uh, when we enter into the kingdom. So, so yeah, so, it, and it also could be, you know, God chast, chastening us, period, you know, because we've been bad. So it could be we've been bad or they hate us because they hate Christ, Jesus first. And so we're going to suffer, per, Jesus suffered unrighteous persecution. He wasn't, he, he wasn't, de uh, he wasn't deserving of the, the persecution he suffered. So just like Job, you know, he, he didn't have. He didn't. He didn't suffer that because of anything he did. So it could be any of those scenarios. But he says, "Yea, though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we we'll fear no evil." So evil is going to happen to us one way or another. So we're, you know, we're not devoid of evil. It will happen to us. Now, to lessen that, if we want to be blessed, you know, and all things work together for good. So even the evil to those that love him, to those that call according to his purpose. So we endure those times, right? That's right. So it could be, it could be hunger. It could be sickness. It could be any of those things. So that's why we wake up each day. That's what I was telling my Sakari. It's like, man, just no matter what happened yesterday, God woke you up. You got a whole new day. <laughs> you got a whole new day to change, fix. To do, you got new. It's a new day to just you know do better. That's it. No matter how bad yesterday was or last week was, you have a new day to change it. Nothing can change that. You woke up. You have breath. You have a chance to change it. So, and no matter if you wake up in that circumstance, whatever that circumstance is, you woke up and you have a chance to change it. Paul was in prison much. And that's what I'm saying. Like when we read through what Paul went through, it didn't stop his ministry. He Never, what he said, I have kept the faith. I finished my course. So that's how we should look at it. But yeah, is it, can a Christian go through those things? Of course. Why not? Why wouldn't we? We're still yeah. living this earth. And uh, Paul, Paul even continued on, even seeing what Stephen went through. Mm -hmm. He knew it could happen to him, I suppose. Oh, yeah. that's. And then he said, he said, don't, don't charge this to their, their, uh, there, what do you say? Don't keep this to their charge or something like that. I mean, he died yeah. being stoned for preaching, he didn't do anything wrong, he was doing the will of God. And he said, Lay this not to their charge. So, I mean, did he say, Avenge me, or God, why is this happening to me? Or, you know, wait, I thought I, I was doing your work, why am I being? Yeah, we should expect through much tribulation, we're gonna go. It's going to happen to us. Through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom. He entered into the kingdom. But that was a lot of tribulation, being stoned to death. That's pretty tough. I think some of the stuff we deal with, and now we're going to be on top of dealing with that. But, I mean, it's a good question, but I think it, the whole answer is all through Scripture. Just look at what all the disciples. Peter was in prison. Paul was in prison. Silas was in prison. I mean... It was it saying what is the warning in, in Revelation? Where he's gonna the the uh to, to the church, Revelation three, I think, where he's saying the he's gonna throw you know some of the saints into prison, the devil. I don't know. Well he uh he told Paul right up front, uh, really. I mean, well this is uh, Acts nine, right? And this is uh I'm talking about Paul I said, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way for he is a chosen vessel talking about Paul unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and Kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, I mean, stating right there before it even happened, he, he Paul's going to suffer. <laughs> So, yeah, it's Revelation know, uh, two ten. I, I was in the wrong one, but you're right. That's oh. a good point, Neil. Yeah. Yep. That thou shalt suffer. See, fear none of those things which thou shalt not may 
or not possibly you will else shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days be thou faithful unto death <laughs> just like just like uh, Stephen and I will give thee a crown of life so God is telling you you're going to suffer some stuff you, you might be some of y'all are going to be thrown in prison and he said but just be faithful unto death so it may not it may kill you whatever you suffer may kill you be faithful unto death just know that a crown of life is awaiting you so where is your faith is it is it what you've seen what you can experience what you can feel is it as long as you're living in that good house or having that nice car to drive or whatever or is it your faith you know because you know that god has got a crown of life for you and you, and you saying that you holding on to that you truly believe it and you're gonna you you're gonna keep the faith <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to turn your back on them and say no I can't do this I'm about to go do my rap album <laughs> mm -hmm -hmm. well you know God chastises the ones he loves so, too so that's God's love for us so you know when we get chastised um, these things happen to us we shouldn't do what most of the world does and, and, and even we get tied up in this sometimes and, and these the bad things happen and we say why is this happening to me but we should know that, you know, God does these things to us to correct us because he loves us. He, he, he says he loves his sons. He, he loves the ones that believe on him. We are now sons of God. So he loves us. He chastises us. He does it out of his love for us. So it's a sign of his love. So we get chastised. We should see it as his love. Not, uh, you know, of course it's never fun getting a, a whooping, but, um, you know, we should definitely uh, have it first in mind that uh, this is God's direct hand to us. It, it's like a hug from him. So he loves us. And this is showing that um, makes me think of a scripture where um, I don't know if it was Acts, maybe early in a or mid Acts, where they're preaching and told uh, not to preach. And uh, they suffered like beatings or something in the name of Jesus and and they were uh, happy to happy at that. I forget paraphrasing all that, of course. Let's see. Let's see, and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. I mean, how... How often, you know, are you happy from getting, you know, a beating? <laughs> <laughs> right. And daily in the temple and in every house, they, seat, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, amen. And there's other one too. <clears throat> right here. It says, this whole chapter is about faith, and it's talking about these different people. It says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of armies of aliens women received their dead race to life again and others were tortured 
It's actually the only mention of torture. Not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scorchings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. Oof, man. Were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better things, some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Which is the list of a lot of persecution. Yeah, that saw on asunder. It kind of got me too, Kurt. Oh yeah, man. That's old testament stuff. Saw on asunder. Asunder means Sunder means to cut, divide. So they were huh. cut in half. Huh. Yeah. Wow. I believe Nebuchadnezzar did that. King J David did that with his enemies. They, they were no joke, man. Like you hear people today joking about, you know, their kings. But, uh, I don't think I don't think we should do that. Paul had quite a list going on about all the uh, um, all that he went through about being stoned and how yeah, he. I think he even did he say did he say he was killed or something or uh, uh, I don't remember that, but I don't. It was like he like he um, almost lost his life or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He, I don't know if it was in Acts. Uh, we went over that before. Like, yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. Mm -hmm. I'll never remember the somewhere in Acts. Where it was like, did he die? And then he came back to life? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I, remember that. I remember that conversation a little bit. We never, what did we come out with? Did he, uh, did he actually die and he was a, uh, or were he maybe he almost died because I mean he he was obviously well BK, uh, BK was saying that he did uh, I think he was alluding to that he did he could have mm -hmm. died and come back to life I was saying that that um, I was saying that he didn't but I he was, maybe he didn't actually die but um, but uh, you know he was obviously one of the apostles that had uh, you know healing powers uh, by God. Special, um, uh huh. Right. So when he was stoned, you know, did did, did God just raise him out of it? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I believe he, he, he was close to death. I don't know. I don't know whether I necessarily agree with him mm. dying and coming back to life. Mm. Even like oh. the the snake bite on him, it had no effect mm -hmm. on him. So mm -hmm. a lot of the things maybe just had no effect on him, like. Um, Maybe like Daniel in the uh, the lion's den, you know that the mm -hmm. lion didn't didn't uh, didn't kill him, but he was right there next to the lion. Um, John, right? I mean, that's it. John, that's John. That's about the uh, v v viper, was it the snake? Yeah, viper I think it was, was promised to the disciples. We we got to look at that too. But uh, right here, David. It says how about because by this deed thou has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die I mean man I mean how, how much the world is more wicked now now they just now people just have a platform where they can blaspheme that's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. like, like YouTube or social media. 
And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought the Lord and of the child, for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. You know, dies. And now, and David comforted Beth, she by his wife. So now she is his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidia, because of the Lord. And Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon and took the royal city. And Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah and have taken the city of waters. And therefore gather the rest of the people together and camp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called after my name. And David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. And he took their king's crown from off his head and weight thereof, whereof was a talent of gold with the precious stones. And it was set on David's head. And he brought for, forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. And he brought forth the people that were therein and put them under saws and under harrows and iron and under axes of iron and made them pass through the brick kiln and thus did he unto the cities of the children of Ammon and David so David and all the people returned unto Israel mm. and David was no joke so so it looks like he he cut them in half <clears throat> and then is the brick kiln like a I mean, right today, what we call like a kiln, right? It was where you bake like pottery at like 2000 degrees or something. And so that says brick kiln, one word. So is it a kiln made of brick that gets very hot? So did he cut them in half and burn them up? Is that what he did? Brick kiln. I have no idea what a brick kiln is. It looks like from the pictures that I'm seeing, it just looks like a big oven. Hmm. I so basically, he, he burned them up, and which, you know, hey. It, uh, make, yeah, right. Just like it says, make, don't make your children pass through the fire of Molech. Now it's saying, yeah. made them pass through the brick kiln. Yeah. Yeah. See, and why? Because he gave, has given them great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. See, that's, man, that's the punishment. That's right. That's uh, how God takes care of evil, right? With the rod of men. That's the, whole, so. that's the whole, not just one city. It says, thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. So one city and at a time. Oof. Well, wow. Rabba. It's crazy to think that no matter what they can do to us here, God's gonna do much worse to them. Like that's that's crazy. Yeah, man. Oh, amen. Oh. They can burn us, cut us up, chop our heads off. You know, if we if if we got to a point where maybe persecution, you know, happened or whatever, or you know, we we're in a situation, you know, government, I don't know. But no matter what they can do to us, we should always fear the uh, the one that's the decider of where our soul goes. That's right. What's that one we read yesterday that says, uh, was it Romans 8? The end of Romans 8. Let me think here. What was it about? It was about uh, basically whatever the principalities or anyone could do to you that, uh, I don't remember how the rest of it goes. 
Uh, but it was already like uplifting for us, you know, to hear that no matter what we go through, live a uh, quiet and peaceful life. Romans, I pray for your leaders. Something like that. It was uh, n n nor principalities, nor uh, I think maybe leaders, or if talking about like whatever they evil they do against us, it won't prevent us from being with the father or something it, that's very very paraphrased uh but it had that vibe to it uh, if I can. to i exhort therefore that first of all supplications Prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Amen. Amen. Here it goes. Um... <clears throat> that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior who will have all men to be saved and come to unto the knowledge of the truth. We should pray for our kings. Oh, but amen. We... Amen, definitely. I mean, God puts them, <clears throat> puts our principalities there, right? You said we shouldn't or we should? What did you say? We should, right? Yeah. Amen. Here we go. Uh, Romans eight, uh, the very the last few lines, four lines, five lines. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Say nothing that speaks what you were saying you know that no matter what they do to us you know it's a, a maybe a quick sting um but you know they they kill us and they can't separate us from god ever never ever amen That's a great point that Patrick made too. That yes, they can do all those things to us, but oh man, God is gonna do a lot worse to them uh -huh. for a long time. I was yeah. just thinking that eternity, eternity. Yeah. It's not, just, not just for a moment. Just for a moment. I, mean, I mean, if you had, if the, you had the okay, get yeah, a little. I know y'all made it all the way to eternity, but is that a is there a scripture that says joy cometh in the morning, or is that just a song I heard? Could you look it up on the church? <laughs> joy in the morning. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, I was gonna say even a little bit of little bit of pain, like you know, if somebody was just you know pinching you or like just broke your your pinky you know, eternally, that is just, I mean, you always have, you know, that pinky broken or like, you know, a pain eternally, that, that's misery. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, just imagine the, the being burnt in fire and having worms eaten in it. I mean, that, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for saving us. I mean, 
it, it's not worth it. It's not worth not believing on him. Anyway, keep going. Joy come in the morning. <laughs> it does say this. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Maybe that's the one. Okay. To. Okay, man. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I heard him say, "Joy cometh in the morning. It comes in with, it comes in with the morning light." Like but it's it's just not. It, it might not be scripture. It just might be a song. Is that that? Is that the church you went to last weekend? <laughs> uh, uh, this is, I'm just playing with you. This this has to be like 30 years ago. It has oh, to be. Man. I found it. Familiar. It says, for his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It's scripture. It's scripture. Cedric was, Cedric was right on. I tell you, man, you, you tell Kurt and he finds it. He's Yeah, Kurt a good Bible guy. Kurt good for that. A good preacher. Yeah. That's what I'm you saying. Just type in the word. The words. And it will come up. Or it won't. So, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. All this stuff. Amen. You wake up and it's like, well, this is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And, Amen. And if you think about it, on the flip side, I mean, we shouldn't imagine what heaven's going to, we, we, we can't imagine it. Um, it's actually evil to even, you know, try to, because our imaginations are, you know, they're not good. Our, our hearts aren't good. So we shouldn't, we should just let heaven be whatever it's going to be when we get there. But even if it was just me being able to be in my garden on this mountain forever, <laughs> that alone, that alone, you know what I'm saying? Like the flip side of someone just being in pain, you know, if I just, you know, we just had the most simplest, you know, whatever the case may be for eternity, the fact that time will never stop, that we will live forever, that in itself, that immortality, that our spirits are incorruptible selves, that is that's the beauty of it you know what i'm saying like we're gonna we're, we're we have eternal life as of now because we believed and whatever heaven's going to be like which is going to be amazing because eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard and the mansions and all of that we're going to have that for eternity so it's like okay we go through pain we go through persecution even if i was poor my entire life i lived out of a cardboard box this whole life and I believed on Lord Jesus, it still would be worth it. You get what I'm saying? Amen. Like, so good. He's so good. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, can you... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You uh, mentioned a scripture that said it's sort of like evil to uh, imagine. Or uh, could you could you pull it up a scripture? So I, I mean, whatever whatever concept that was. Yes, sir. Would love to. Well, starting in Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, then you come down to... I wonder if that's the one that we were basing it on. Kurt and I were studying one day, and we were. And we were uh, it does. It does cover every imagination. So. Still, I walk in the measure of my own, my heart. 
Uh, okay, uh, Genesis eight twenty one two, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, "I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done." So even though God was making that proclamation, you know, saying that He wouldn't do it again, He still he still made a fact that man's heart is evil from his youth. Um, and then, of course, you know, the one. Um, but God. Uh, no one. No one's heart's good, but God. No one's heart. Um, Uh, Romans three eleven says there is none that understand that there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone, gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Um, so that doing good. Um, but yeah, our, heart, our hearts are our hearts are are evil. Our hearts um you know, they are um, contaminated with sin. I don't know what I want to say that, but our flesh. Right here. They also that seek after my life they snares for me, and they that seek my hurt speak mischievous things and imagine deceit all the day long. Speak mischievous. Mischievous. Mischievous, yeah. Mischievous. 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 This one. This will make someone never use the word imagination or imagination conversation. No, it's over. When they say that, it's done. Pretty much. I, I imagine it to be, well, you're imagining evil. Pretty much. Well, especially if, when it's about heaven. Mm -hmm. Those things. It's like, well, we don't know. See, so our imagination is already wrong. And if you're then talking about it, proclaiming it as truth, it's actually a lie. So I think we just need to be careful with that. Amen. No. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. So if you're uh, if you're a man or the old man, <clears throat> which we still have, um, that's the evil heart. You have an evil heart, and um, it has evil. It has those imaginations from that evil heart. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? That's right. 
See it's vain. Right here, talking about um, what does Roman once again about? Reprobates, yeah, reprobate minds, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. All right, here, Paul, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's what's happening with imagination. Because it, it's actually against God. So, uh, casting down imaginations. All right. <clears throat> All right, any more scripture? Got to head out in a minute. Oh, that was good enough for me. I got another uh, conversation straightener. Whenever they come with the imagination, that I got you just gave me about five or six scriptures to cut that down. Thanks a lot. It's all about preaching, not the, the doctrine of imagination or anything else. Just keep it to preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's all. I ran into some people that said, since I didn't go to seminary, I can't tell them nothing. Uh, I just got to stick to stick to my uh, stick in my lane and stick to Jesus, the the death, burial, resurrection. That's my conversation. Pretty much it. When you get, when you get up the heart, though, you go, it'll be it'll be a breath. Gotcha. One that you can really sell. I mean, your wisdom will. Um, but, um, but they'll just but never, they'll be just never be able to understand, understand it. Understand it. Amen. It really comes it really down, comes to, you know, to win conversation, conversation and all that, and. All that and Debating is a believer. believer. The believer. Believer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just very rare that I run into it, but I do run into a pushback sometimes where you have to either uh, shut it down completely or just go on by my business. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I've had a lot of life with my family or my dad or my mom or something. Or something. You know, you kind of want to just elaborate. Yeah, you know, go closer. What that? Like, like, like that time. Kurt, making it a, a short. You break up a little pad. I say, look like Kurt making it a short one. Short one. Yeah, he said you gotta go. Yeah, man, I'm trying to. Get a little bit more discipline on the schedule. Mm, mm. So I can wake right. up earlier. Yeah, you got okay. things to do. That's yeah, understood. Yeah. That's understood. I'm going to be awake when I wake up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be, you know, awake but sleepy. I want to be, you know, get at least seven hours. Would you, would you say everything you're doing right now, right now, 
You're giving it a hundred percent. Hundred percent. Giving. Giving. You're breaking up. <laughs> Uh, Cedric, I think it's your echo. I don't. My my echo. Okay, let me turn it off. Let me turn my stuff off. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I think it was his echo. I was saying everything that you're doing right now. Um, I am thinking about something specific, but everything that you're doing right now, do you? Would you honestly be able to answer that you're giving it your complete hundred percent all? that if it were, you know, whatever big company that you want to, you know, impress, that that's the same drive that you have behind all of the work that you're doing right now and that you'd be happy with it and you'd walk away knowing that you did your best, your absolute best. No. Okay, well, you got to reevaluate then because I need you to be on your absolute beds, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm putting in time, but it, it's not a hundred. Like, I want to be honest. Like, there's definitely things I need to improve. Okay. Just certain projects that you're working on, I just wanted to ask you that because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that as you have someone's trust, you know, that you're just doing all that you can. It's like you're, it's like your own baby. Oh yeah. Which I don't think I'm, I don't, I wouldn't say it like I'm saying it in doubt. Um, I just always try to keep that mindset. Like when I'm working with brides and stuff, like I just, it's like, she's my sister or she's my mom or like, you know, I care about the way her hair is going to look that much. Whereas like, you know, um, and it just, you know, every little detail matters. But anyway, I just wanted to ask you that. It's, it, I'm not, you know, it's a broad question, man. <laughs> well, it's a broad question, but it's a, a specific too. Right. But, I mean, you know. What, and, what does the 100% mean? Is it time-wise? Is it seriousness-wise? Uh, I would say 100% would be that you're putting forth every level of quality that you could possibly, you know, I mean, you only have however many years, two years, you know, that you co you've collected with education and, you know, teaching yourself or whatever. So I get it. So you can only apply what you know or what you're, what you're, uh, you know, learning to do or teaching yourself. And, you know, I get that, but I just want you to be able to walk away, walk away and say, you know, have the integrity behind it because integrity integrity is a really big thing for me you know doing doing the right thing when when no one else knows or only god sees it you know or you know you may never get credit for it no one will may ever, ever see it but you know that you've done your absolute best so yeah, just i took i took your question more time wise oh no, not time i mean because you can take an hour and do as much dedication in one hour that you can do in 10 hours, yeah. you know? So not time wise, I'm just talking about the quality that you're putting forth. Oh yeah. But then, then let me re-answer, I think, because I, I'm not delivering something I'm not proud of. That's, that's definitely not happening. But I, I took your question more time wise. Are you, are you, are you what, what your time <clears throat> yeah, I definitely, that's why I said with the efficiency, I definitely can improve the efficiency. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm not selling something I'm not proud of. No. So that would be 100. The time efficiency would be 70, 80. Okay. I like that answer. All right. Well, cool. Yeah, I don't want you to think I was uh, just asking it from a negative position. I just was thinking about it because I'm, you know, I, I care about your business. I care about you. You know, I want to. I want want you to do your best. I want to see you do your best. Um, you know. So anyway, all right. Well, I'm gonna head out and uh, 
Hopefully, I'll see y'all soon. Brother Say, I appreciate you joining, man. Always a pleasure to see you. And uh, Godspeed. Godspeed. Good to see you guys. Godspeed. And Godspeed. Godspeed.